have a, uh, a reenactment of an 11th century jousting tournament and uh, feast. And uh, the knights that we have here actually will recreate the, uh, the jousting that was done back in the 11th century. Jousting uh, originated out of warfare, but it also became a sport later on. It was their pastime. The ends of the lances during tournaments, uh, the, the ends were blunted so as not to hurt anyone. Um, but none of our knights have ever jousted with cream pies at the end of theirs. The Pies of Doom! The jousting could be used to settle disputes as well. Say you had uh, two lords who were disagreeing over uh, properties or monies, that sort of thing, and they couldn't reach a decision. They would have their two best champions face off in a jousting arena. Winner gets both halves of the duck. The horses we use here at medieval times are uh, the actual descendants of the Andalusian stallions that were used in the 11th century warfare. They're very, very strong horses, and they needed to be to support the weight of the knight, who was also wearing his armor and carrying his weapons. The horses will wear something that's called a comparison, and it's like a, a very large uh, blanket covering that actually has the, the symbols and colors of the knight's noble house. It was very difficult for the knights to be able to control the horse by using the reins because they had the lance in one hand and the shield in the other. So they had to learn how to ride a horse by using their legs. He can get the horse to start, to stop, to turn, to back up, all with weight uh, disbursement and, and leg commands. Now the leg cues are very important for a joust, especially when it comes to training. When you're first training a horse, they're not going to run straight at another horse that, until they learn to trust the rider. So what you're going to want to do is you want to keep that right leg on them and move them to the side, towards the side of the joust. Now depending on what you're doing in the games of the joust, when you want a horse to take off, put your hand forward first of all, and bring your legs back, and say, get up there. Jousting uh, is not very easy to master. It's one thing to learn how to ride a horse. It's another to have a lance in the right hand, a shield in your left hand, some sort of rein contact in your left hand, uh, leg control, weight control, weight and balance and speed and stopping the horse and starting the horse and timing it with the other opponent. Part of a knight's training, and uh, it was also a way to, to hone their skills, was uh, games. One of them was known as running at the rings, and the knights would have to ride as if they were jousting. Getting that lance tip, which is what, 10 to 14 feet out in front of you, through a little ring that's maybe two inches wide. Uh, the running of the rings is actually still done today in modern jousting. There are jousting uh, leagues that take place all around the world. What we're going to see is uh, two of our knights, Sir Leland and Sir Michael, and they're going to face off in a, uh, a jousting match. Oftentimes to start a joust you would have what is known as a herald. A herald had a trumpet, and uh, at the trumpet's blast the knights would charge. <laughs> 